What's pussy popping, guys? I am Ariane Andrew. And I am Matt Dillon. And we are here again with a brand new episode of Sippin' the Tea. Uh, where we sip the tea and our guests spill that tea. Uh, we hope, we hope. But before we get to our guests today, we got a quick little uh, reminder of who these four-legged creatures are, just our in case you missed it. Our little co-host, Glitty, Little Glee Glit, and... And Miss Mama! So we have a very, very special guest here today. She is an Olympic gold medalist, and I'm just, like, super just impressed with her. She has amazing energy. We have Louise Hazel over here. What's up, girl? Thank you for having me, guys. Hey, hey. Thank, Thank you. I watched you as a kid in 2010. Oh, you at the did? Commonwealth Games, oh, people. Oh, my goodness. I had to beat all of the Australians, all of the Canadians. We, we okay with that, because you're here on this couch that's now. That's right, that's right. Thanks for having me. Number one. Go, go, baby. Yeah, let's, yes. let's, crown. <laughs> we got to talk about that. So how how long did you do track and field? I started when I was like 10 years old. That was my first introduction to the track. And I think like anybody who's athletic, you find out real, real soon. Like I was just sprinting and beating the boys. So you know that you have some sort of skill. Were you running after the boys? <laughs> yeah, <I'm not laughs> running away. She was like, like running like, away. That, that's yeah. right, girl. <laughs> <laughs> oh, brilliant. So yeah, I mean, I started training when I was 10 years old, my local tra like track, and I just started doing endurance. And I was just like, this is kind of hard. It turned out I was a sprinter, that's why. And so I just took, you know, multiple events under my belt and then just kept it going. And before I knew it, I was, you know, top of my school, top this in the area. From and then, 10. Yeah. That mental capacity yeah. there at 10 and obviously leading up to all the accolades that you have achieved, mm -hmm. not even talking about what you're doing currently. Yeah. How at 10 do you just have that tunnel vision to be like, mm. I actually enjoy this and like I'm going to put my butt because it's, a lot it's, a, it's, it's body, it's mind, it's, it's spirit too. Yeah. How do you I, actually like gun yourself from 10 to be like, that's hey, you're, it's, you're good at it. So I think from I, number one, you're good at it. I think it's just having a very strong sense of self. Like I knew when we were doing, I don't know whether you did this at school, but back home in England, they were like, oh, tell me what you like to do and all this stuff. And then they'll put it into a machine. They'll be like, oh, you're going to be a doctor. And I'm like, I knew in my heart, yes. I knew that I was a sportswoman. I knew that was my destiny, for, even from that age, maybe even like, you know, 10, 11. I knew that the core of me was a sports person. Just because every single day, if I picked up a ball and threw it, if I had to chase someone down, I could catch them. And so, there is, I think, from a young age, we know who we are. I agree with I that. I think we have an idea of our identity, whether Correct. it be our sexuality or our passions or our interests. You know, I look at one of my friends, his son, doesn't like football whatsoever. He knows he doesn't like football. He loves animals. And so mm. I think that we should, you know, when we're young, we should listen to what our heart says. Instead of what I like, used to say, us. our family, like, will push us to do, like, you know, you should do this or you should go to school and do that. But it is the truth because, I mean, you do what you love, mm -hmm. it shows. Yeah, you know? it's true. You it's, have that it, moment of understanding. Yeah. But then I will, I will segue though and say well. I played football just because the boys How were was hot. It, it was terrible. I did one game. But that's when I realized I was like, damn boy, you like the boys. Exactly. There you go. But I, thought, you but I also believe that you give it everything a shot. The reason I brought that up was because I'm like, I'm sure it wasn't all smooth sailing there. Yeah, no, it wasn't. Because cool. the thing is, at 10, and like just to drive yourself through that, I'm yeah. like, I feel like it's a lot of mindset. And I feel like somebody like yourself mm -hmm. to be so accomplished mm -hmm. in something so physical. Yeah. yeah. In, um, I guess the biggest lesson that I ever learned from my track and field career is in order to win, you must first learn how to lose. Because that mm. first loss, that first time you look time at you that step, camera girl. and say that yes. one time, one time, yes. one time. <laughs> Big take. In order to win, you must first learn how to lose. That's it. Life lesson done. We out. We out. <laughs> no, I agree, though. It's about learning how to... F it's like being okay with failure because, 100%. you know what I mean? It's like if you don't fail, how do you learn and grow? Yeah. And it's like Albert... What is it? Albert Einstein says, the day you stop learning and growing is the day you start dying. Yeah, That's pick right. Up, you're, you're already dead. dead. Yeah. You're already Correct. dead. I remember um, one of my coaches, he always said to me, Lulu, keep your eye on the prize. And he said, you know, what is it that motivates you and what is it that drives you? And I just said, I've got nothing to lose. Like when I stand out there... And I lost my father um, along my Olympic journey, I'm right sorry, in, the, in the middle, just at the point at which we heard that London 2012 was mm. coming, the Olympic Games was coming home to London. Um, you know, just a few years later, I lost my father. So I suffered that ma massive, massive tragedy, which hugely affected my, my performance. And at that point, what I realized, perspective came into play. And I was just like, I'm literally standing here right now with nothing to lose. And so when you talk about mentality, that strong sense of self, you know, it's 
having that self-belief mm -hmm. and just literally drowning out all of the haters, all of the naysayers, and just knowing that there is something out there that is your destiny and having the guts and the arrogance and the confidence to just go after it every single day. I Girl, kind of love you are comment. like giving me... And also pure hard work, right? Oh, for real. That's what the brand is all about. That's exactly what the brand is all about. So let's talk about your brand. So you have, you have this... Give me that. Right. <laughs> yes. So I only brought one. Oh my God. Well, you can put it right now first. because I have my hair up in a bun right now. So you can, uh, you can slay off. We have can... one and that's it. We sold out. So I'm going to get some we're gonna, more stuff. We're going to own this. Okay. Here we go. There it is. Ari, Wait, make, make sure you take the thing off. I got it. Uh, Continue yeah. the discussion. Yeah, so, Let me so try. Slay, like, so how did how did you come up with that? And tell us about that, like your brand and like you know. So the the interesting thing is obviously I'm from London. I'm I'm British. Never and would have known that. I know. I love, <laughs> I love your accent, girl. It's so, 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 so the hot. boys here. the boys in uh, LA Thank would be go. It's the first thing people say when they meet me. I'm like, really, it sounds like crap back home. Do you know what I mean? Same as my accent, because they all think I'm British. Yeah, I was like, no, girl. Yeah, they get they over here. They get Australian and British really mixed so up. So confused. Poor, poor you guys. <laughs> but yeah, that's like rude. Oh. <laughs> but yes, yeah, slay. So I was kind of back home in England and I was writing a book about health and fitness and lifestyle. And I wanted to kind of really speak to my audience. Like I didn't fit, feel like I fit into the status quo. You know, we are athletes and I see people training all the time. And I'm just like, I just see myself as just being slightly more edgy than that or slightly more edgy than the things we see in the health and fitness world, which is very preened and prissy and kale salads and, you know, perfect makeup. I'm like, that's I think you have not authenticity me. And a little yeah. Bit. But I think you have a little bit. There's something and the aura to be here with you. There's something about you in terms of having that edge, but there's also something about like, you're not cookie cutter. No, I'm, and I don't I'm think you've probably ever been cookie I'm a cutter. But you're, but you're genuine. Your life, yeah, you're genuine. No, never, never. And I can't cook, cook, cut cookies. <laughs> I was like, where is this going? That, that, that says something about you, like being a powerful woman, and like you know, yes, being an athlete, but having that edge, you know, like yeah, not being cookie cutter and being yeah. like, you know what, I could still be tough, but I can also still be pretty and authentic and genuine. Yes. And this is the interesting thing about sport. Um, and LeBron James has this platform that he's using at the moment, and they constantly question and asking you things about being a sports person. One of the things that keeps coming back is how much as an athlete should you have a voice? So when you're an athlete and you're beholden to your sponsors and your governing body who are gonna select you for the Olympic team, what ends up happening to every single athlete, no matter what sport you're in, is your voice gets suppressed. Mm. Mm. You're told not to say this in the press interview. You're told not to wear that out there and make that bold statement. You're told not to kneel. You're literally just told to fit this image of what we want a sports person to be, which is a role model. No one asked you, like, you know, you didn't ask to be a role model. You just asked to be able to go out there and give it your best on the sporting field. True. And so this, you know, tag of role model is forced upon you. Correct. And it's something that you have to adapt to. And you have to learn that you have a great responsibility because, you know, at the Olympic Games, you have a stadium of 80,000 people. The world. But then billions Correct. that are watching, watching. Mm -hmm. yeah. and so that's your opportunity to not mess up not you know you know rock the boat or maybe it's your opportunity to do the complete opposite which we which, which we could list a few cases yeah mm -hmm. like no. colin yeah you know for, and i mean i respect him for having something to believe in you know yeah. i i say this all the time like i rather walk alone and be myself than mm -hmm. walk with the masses to fit in yeah i you think know? what we've seen with colin kaepernick is this monumentous shift in the role of the sports person. Mm -hmm. Now it's like if you're not if you don't have anything to say, then just go out there, shoot them balls and do whatever it is you do. But now we're opening ourselves up to them as a different kind of leader. And you know, seeing Nike get on board with that was that was huge. that was a huge yeah, for them. So he yeah. now has, you know, NFL are tied in for another ten years, having that thirty year anniversary with Colin Kaepernick and getting behind and supporting him in that way was a big, big move. Yeah, it was. Um, and it was a big move socially. Like seeing the differences between um, the UK and the US is very, very vast. And so going back to the brand, I was writing a book and I wanted to call it like, you know, slay every day or whatever it was. And I remember going to one of the top publishers in London, and I still don't have the book out. It's still a work in progress. And he was kind of like, I don't know, the title's a little bit aggressive. 
and Aggr I was just aggressive. Like, aggressive. aggressive. And I was just like, do you know what? Mm. This is a person who just doesn't understand me, who I am, or my audience is. Because he couldn't comprehend that there are young women out there in the world that aren't cookie cutter. Totally. That aren't, you know, out there constantly eating kale salads. I love like a Isn't burger. The majority of, like, but I also people, love to train. Yeah. The it's majority like of people is not that one percent. Completely. And not the one percent, I'm not talking the wealth factor of it, like the one percent that are in the bubble that a lot of people look to and that the rest of us are sitting here We're individuals. with some, yeah. Yeah. everybody with so much to give and mm -hmm. opinions and personality conversations character. where exactly. we can like yep. agree disagree like this is mm -hmm. what life is about and I'm yep. like uh, girl, you do your book on your own goddamn thing. You I call know, it whatever the fuck you want to do it. <laughs> Play so every day. Play all day. No, you do that because you know what? Yeah. You have a platform. Yes. You have a platform, and I think you have such an illustrious journey. I just want to rewind back because I've always wanted to know because to reach the top of your game, mm -hmm. you got the gold medal. Yes. Oh my goodness. Just, I want to go back there and I want to study a champion. Like yeah. I want to know what that it, felt like because okay. it's hard. I mean, probably can't. So uh, this is this is a story I've told it on my podcast, which we'll come back to it later. Um, so the Commonwealth Games for me was a stepping stone to the Olympic Games. We knew that London 2012 was coming. Um, and at the top of the year, I heard that my major rival, a young lady called Jessica Ennis, who were, then went on to win the Olympics, wasn't going to do the Commonwealth okay. Games. She was going to favor another competition. So uh, the door was kind of left open for me. And I remember in the January, the competition wasn't until the October, I was sat on my physio table and I was getting um, a rub down from my physio. And I said to him, Pora, his name's Pora, big Shout out. Hey, Shout hey, out. Hey. I said, I'm going to win the Commonwealth. He said, that's good, Lulu, like PMA, positive mental He's attitude like, and all that. Get, yeah, it, yeah. get it, girl. Yeah, that's what we would like to see. I'm like, no. I said, I'm going to win the Commonwealth Games. Just was like and there's been two moments in my life where I've just had this feeling of knowing. And the first one was when I was lined up at like the national school championships. It's like the Olympics for kids that are at school. And um, I remember it was a 100 meter race and I was probably like fourth on paper, not you know even pinned to get a medal. And I saw my team manager and I looked at him, a guy called Mike McNeil, a teacher who was volunteer coach and everything. And I just winked at him and he smiled at me and I smiled at him and I nodded. And I got in those blocks and I remember exploding as hard as I could out those blocks. That first 30 meters, I remember my head was down and I was just driving, driving, driving hard. And when I came up into that like strong running position, I was just like, I couldn't see anybody, which meant that I was winning. And I just kept driving, 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 I driving to the end. And it's a very, very odd feeling when you're out in front. And I'll tell you about the Commonwealth Games. And I remember looking up into the stand and seeing my father there and him just being like, yes. And I was like, yes, 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 yes. You crossed that line first, yeah. First ever, like, meaningful gold medal. And the second time. And your dad was watching. That's right. That's epic. And the second time was in 2010. My dad passed away in 2008, so he wasn't with me when I won my big medal. And I can remember, so two years later, my mum flew out to India. It was in Delhi. Um, she was on her own. So even that for me was a big emotional moment. It was the first trip she'd ever done on her own without my father, no one else around. And um, I can remember putting my headphones on and being in the warm-up area. And it was hot in Delhi, man. It was so hot. And warming up. And I had like a sight strain in my qu like quad. And I was just like, you know what? It doesn't matter. I was listening to a song. I can't remember. It said, let the sun shine. And I'm like, yeah, let that mu sunshine <laughs> i was literally like let that sunshine on me today it's going down like you better watch you and i feel like a sorcerer I, it was weird it feels like a little bit of knowing. Was sorcery it's this weird knowing and do you know what like Beautiful. throughout that competition i didn't dominate physically there were events you know my hurdles i came second my high jump i came eighth my shot put i probably came 15th my 200 i came second but when i walked out there for that second day of competition and I was lined up against the girl in the long jump, I could see that she was already cracked. And I could see that my energy was up and hers was down. Mm -hmm. And I could see all of my competitors where at that point when you needed to push on you and you had to it. ask yourself, like, you know, you had to go and get it. That was the point where I was just like, okay, I'm ready for this. And the most, and this is the interesting thing, that thing that I said about when you're out in front, you don't see anybody. Yeah. That's the scariest place to be. The loneliest too. Is leading because you know that everybody is chasing you down. They're hot on your heels.
So I remember going into the 800 meters, the final event, because it's seven events the heptathlon. Didn't didn't let you know that, but it is now. Um, I'm exhausted. Yeah. <laughs> like, Already, no, I know. Not, seven events. So, that's that's a lot. So you go into the 800 meters, and everybody is gunning for you. It's the most the scariest place to be. You, the last thing you want to do is run that way, but then it's the only thing that's going to get you what you want. And so at that point, when you're standing on that start line, you literally ask yourself, Are you that person that you said you were? Are you the gold medalist that? you know, at 10 years old, decided they were going to hmm. do this for like the next 15 years. And that's when you find out who you are, that character, when you are faced with that crucial moment in your life. And it's like success is just a stone's throw away. And how, that's like 30 seconds. You're making all these observations, but it's like yeah. seconds. It's been you're a long like, you're like, I used to run track in, in high school. Yeah. And it's the scariest it's mm -hmm. it's the scariest feeling. It's so weird of being in like the blocks and just. But it makes you feel alive. It does. Mm. It makes that body look popping too, girl. <gasps> Up in my well, this is a, this, <laughs> this is the business now, honey, because you're now using everything. Like you've got the training. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. The brand. Yes. So you're, you so got wait, a podcast. I, yes, we have. Can I podcast. ask this though? For you know, it's very hard typically after being an athlete to cross over. Mm. Like, what's next? Mm. So like for young girls and boys listening, what would be your advice to them on how to make that switch of their yep. deciding to be an athlete mm -hmm. and once, you know, you retire? My like, what would you, what would, what advice would you get? My main thing is never believe that you're just an athlete. The moment you believe that you're just an athlete is the point at which you will only ever be an athlete. And so my man mindset, as I started to do more media work for the Olympic Games, was like, this is fun. There are other assets to my personality that need to be fed. Like I enjoy doing stuff on the camera and stuff like that. So find out what your passions are outside of whatever your sport is and harness and hang on to them as long as possible. And as much as you need to put your time and focus into your sport, have those side hustles. Mm -hmm. The sooner you become and learn business and the fact that the sport is a business and you are the product. Correct, you're that's the when, brand. That's when you realize that, you know what? Products have a shelf life. So, you know, you have a limited amount of time in which to make an impact in your sport, and then you're getting thrown in the bin. So you get your money, you cash out, and you invest it. You don't go spending it on big cars, big wheels, this, that, or the other. You get yourself a house, you put your money, half your money into savings every single year, and you start planning for the future. As soon as you start getting checks, start planning for the future. Preach, but yes. you're one of... You know, there are people on the other end of the spectrum that go get the fancy houses and fancy cars that burn out real fast. But you yeah. know, the reason I think that is, is because a lot of sports people, we come from nothing backgrounds. We come from very kind of modest backgrounds. Some people don't have anything. And so that first paycheck is like, yo, I know, I know what I did go. with mine. I went and bought myself some Jimmy Choo's. And if nah. not, but if you don't have the right people around you to tell you to do these things, like, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, even same for me when I was wrestling, I didn't have, I didn't come from a wealthy family. Mm -hmm. So it's like, even though I've always been really like frugal, yep. it's always nice to have like people that support you to say you should be doing this. So yep. that's why I wanted, you know, to mm -hmm. ask you the advice you would give to someone who is, you know, pursuing being an athlete, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Because it is the truth. You have to, the shelf life is short and you have to, you know, invest. Mm. And, but it is hard, you know, if you don't really come from money, that first paycheck you do want to kind of be like, oh, let me go get me a nice you little car. You want to create yourself. Just make sure yeah, that second years one's years. good. That's make right. sure the second one goes right in that make bank. Make sure yeah. the second one turns up because you're not injured or whatever, doing totally. what the stupidness that's it. that you're doing. That's it, for sure. So, yeah. Wait, so let's talk about this gym girl. So you said you're, gonna, <gasps> you're building a gym. Yes. So, um, you know, this is just an extension of Slay Brand. Here, here in LA? Yes. Yeah, it's going to open here. I don't know when. I'm saying it out loud. But you guys stay tuned happening. for it. You guys have heard it first. She's, she's it's saying it out loud. Yeah. Put it it's in the happening. universe. Because everything you did, you won an Olympic gold medal. Yep. You got the medals. Yep. 10 years old. I was like, well, it's happening somewhere exactly. very it's soon. Gonna happen. It's You're gonna saying happen. it's happening. It's, it's I, I believe be a, you when you yeah, say it. So it's basically, um, it's going to be a female first gym. The brand is obviously going to be an extension of Slay. Which Everything that we do with this is all about physical, mental, social health. And so I see um, the gym being the platform and the hub for that, the place at which I can create the content, the place at which I can invite people for events to listen to stories like this and, and hear from people. Um, you know, extension of Slay podcast where we have Slay Sunday, where we have you know, people from the worlds of business, sport, entertainment come on and tell us their career-defining moments. This is basically the opportunity for me to go out there and educate women as to how 
best to train because you know you've been in the fitness industry the wrestling and everything and so you know every single day I'm out here in these streets witnessing the place in which health and fitness was founded yet they don't even have the basics right at most places it's true and that's even worse for women purely simply because most gyms just aren't set up with us in mind you know we're just not a focus we're an afterthought and so i wanted to create a space that was female first yes woman empowerment girl i love that mm -hmm. i really love that i think there's scope there too i can see that going into like you know you have a beautiful way about you in, in articulating your message. Thank you. You've lived it, you've mm. breathed it, and I think that you could have a really big impact on young girls. Mm. And I think that can be like, you could take and this all the so way to school humble. curriculum. You know, because you could I have, think this should you, be in the school curriculum. You could. You can take no this to wrong. school curriculum because I think. I think the interesting thing. It's, it's the interesting neat. thing about, I think we find about schools is the lack of understanding as to the role that fitness has to play in sport. So if you think about your first sporting experience is either going to be positive or negative and it's going to One shape you thousand percent. If you were that person that would pick last for the team sport, yeah. then your experience of sport sucks. It sucks nuts. And so <laughs> I mean, how are you supposed to know? <laughs> How did you, how did you know? Tell me how you really feel, girl. Let me, let me. It's empty, Chad. I drank my own dry. It's tea. I knew she had some spice in her, but it sucks. <laughs> but she not. says it's so beautiful. I know, I know, nuts. I know. So, so let elegant. me just split, girl. And so, um, it is know, true, though. It fitness, is true, though. Fitness is the gateway to sport. And so, what we should be coaching prior to coaching sport is fitness. We should be, you know, harnessing our young children, encouraging to play and be active. Like and then the transition yeah. should be into sports. You're right, it's because it's then it's it would money. be less scary. Because somebody like me, I wasn't like you guys. Mm -hmm. But I did give it a shot. So I'm not at that spectrum of, like, not willing to give something a try. Yeah. But at the same time, it is if it's not for you, yep. it can be very jarring. Yeah. So, and I think, like... I like the way you approach it. Yeah. Make fitness the foreground. Make and that becomes a lifestyle well, anyway, because you don't have to be like the rugby captain on soccer. You don't yeah. have to be, because it can be being that kid not picked is That's right. sucks ass. It's inclusive it's and it's cool. about participation. And it can also be competitive if you want to take it there. But Which the you did, and exactly. excelled. And there's a lot of people that that don't have those opportunities and maybe you know you never know and, but, but fitness is such a good like way like i know even when i'm stressed to work out mm. it like gets the endorphins running and oh it's my. like so i'd be like well let me go have a bottle of wine i'm but like that's why people let me need go. to hear the message mm. and yeah. the word younger mm -hmm. because by the time you know yeah. my age honey that yeah. impression's yeah. made exactly. girl i'd like, love to go get wine that's why <laughs> right. exactly do you but know what? I, I want boys like me when i was younger to be like okay they they hear about it they know it yes and they too can be that yeah. with determination, mm -hmm. drive, ambition. Mm -hmm. And then, hey, if you suck at it, then you suck at it. Then you weren't meant to do that. But there's something else you're good at. Exactly. You know what I mean? But yeah. I feel like yeah. my my depth when I was at school, I didn't have somebody like you that the curriculum, I think curriculum is so important. And mm -hmm. I think there's so much more than just Especially a gem. Especially now in this you. day and age. I think there is so much on this brand that you yes. can take and you yes. can affect young girls mm -hmm. young boys yes Com like the community as a whole yeah. i think but i think especially young girls and not to like not talk about our boys but i think just being already like a woman and an athlete like mm, that stands for so much within itself you know because yes. I mean? sports has always been centered around guys yes you know yes. so especially I, here yeah you know mm. so it's you know? great you know me being a woman, you know, saying that yes, for young little girls, like mm. I mean, of course, we're not going to eliminate the no, boys. No, of course but not, but there's hurdles mm -hmm. in, in itself being yeah. a woman, yeah. and, and I understand that, and I think that... Yeah. I think the buck starts and stops with our generation. Our generation of kind of 30-year-old mums who grew up with access to the internet and information. Not in the same way that our mothers did. Totally. We just had to figure mm. it out and, oh, yeah, I know vegetables are he healthy and I know that I should exercise, but you know what? I'm trying to make this money so I can raise my kids and this, that, and the other. We now have so much access to so much information, so much education. So our children should be the generation that are fitter, more educated than we are. But, that's, so but it's, it's so important that we reach that message so, so far, far reaching. But at least you're using your platform for positive, and this is what I, this is what I love is connecting with people who use their like their i hate the word influencer but to say their influence mm. and their you know their voice for something positive yes I you know what i mean because it's it's so it's like especially now with social media people yep. see these images and see these things that i was saying before that are so unattainable mm -hmm. but it's like and unrealistic and unrealistic like 
that like you know the the average person looking at that's like there's no way I can do that. Yeah, you know what I mean. You have to ask yourself what are you actually influencing. Exactly. And if that doesn't, and you you also have to ask who am I as well. Because and half of these people, you nailed yeah. it on the head. Because mm -hmm. I honestly believe half of these people don't have an identity themselves. So they're in fact, they're trying else. to find yes. it while they're influencing people, search. and that's a problem. Yeah, and that's a problem. Whereas somebody like you, you have a you track record. You know exactly who you are, girl. But you know? not not through sheer mistake either. Through sheer Hard story work. determination. <laughs> yes. That's what I mean. So it's somebody like you. The, the generations need to look up to people like you. Yeah, I mean, because I hope you so. because you didn't just <laughs> yes. you just didn't pop out and be like, yeah, this I'm going to do this. Yeah, it was. I did this, and yeah. this didn't come easy, and I yeah. guarantee you, I'm sure it didn't. I think every, what everybody understands about, you know, being a sports person is that doesn't happen overnight. You might mm -mm. have been born with uh, a gift of speed or athleticism. You still got to train. She's going to chase my ass That's right, right out of this building. That's right. <laughs> you got to train and work hard. And In those track pants, yeah. Oh, yes, honey. <laughs> we, we won't mention this ranch. Uh, so, girl... So people can follow you and hear your message. Tell everyone out there what your social media, your podcast, your we want clothing to hear it line, all. Where we find you. Oh, man, hear, mama's listening. We want to hear all mama. Shut up, we want to hear so, uh, you can find me on Instagram, Twitter, and also Facebook at Louise Hazel. And then we also have Slay Podcast. I've got something dropping very, very soon before Ooh. Thanksgiving. It'll probably be out by the time this interview's out. And that's going to be on the podcast too. Stay tuned. It's going to be fire. And you'll be able to tune in, listen. I'm, I'm not going to give too much away. Ooh. 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 Tune in and listen. I was like, she's <laughs> dropping it. Um, you can follow, follow me across the board at Ariane Andrew in this little nugget here at Glitty Glit. I'm Matt Dillon across the board. Matt Dillon, 1983. And I'm not going to wake the beast. So, yeah, we'll like call it a call it day on that one. But I really want to, honest to God, thank you yeah. for coming and really kind of this was impactful. Oh, you really are. You. you really are authentic in a way that, like, I hope transcends off screen because and, and, your and message. And so humble because you could walk around and be like, "I'm the fucking." Girl, I was, I bring, I was know, like, "Wait, wait, wait, where's your bag?" In the back. Oh no! You oh, 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 I was like. Because I, like, I, I know me, if I won a medal, I'd be carrying that thing. <laughs> I, got, I got a ribbon in swimming once. That'll do it. That'll do it. I, I came so third. Good. That was the <laughs> brilliant moment that. of my life. Well, I've tried swimming once, and I remember setting off in one place and ending up like way off course. It was a hot So it wasn't place. your jam. Well done, you. Mm -hmm. um, She's much more than a hero. <laughs> kind of, uh, well, thank, well, thank you, you so girl, much. For, yes, for being here and sharing your story. It's and thank mean, you, girl, for being my you. Oh, <laughs> um, and so next time, guys, on Focus TV Network, sipping that tea where we sip Yes, and, and I our guest killer. Thank you, guys. Bye. Yeah, you got the wrong number. Click.